European companies are mining deeper into data in an effort to better understand demand. At this year's Industrial Excellence Awards Conference, many managers said that they were using various data to get closer to the customer. For more on this, we turn to Steve Chick, an INSEAD professor and one of the judges at this year's Industrial Excellence Awards presentation. Steve, what real management trends did you uh, spot this year? We did see uh, some, some smart use of data uh, and large amounts of it to try to um, identify segments, to try to identify areas where some new services could be delivered to the customer. An example of that would be with ITRON and Macon. And Macon. So they're uh, building um, those meters that measure how much water goes through your home. Uh, so um, uh, water measurement devices. And they've developed a mechanism where they can remotely read how much water consumption has been taken and some additional software tools to take that uh, data and turn it into information through some software tools which comes up on a screen and identifies where uh, water is being lost in the public systems. And in, in France, for example, the fraction of clean water that's produced that's lost is 25% or more. Uh, globally, it's, it's 37% on an average. And so if you think about that, if you can address that problem, you can really uh, manage population growth much more effectively with the same infrastructure, um, or you can cut back on the number of, of plants that need to be built one way or the other. So this, this service, this use of this information technology is an enabling uh, a mechanism to help their clients identify and prioritize uh, repair activities for the water treatment systems. And we've seen some other plants as well doing some very interesting things to try to come up with really customized solutions. Not trying to treat an average case, but really kind of a, um, the outlier. Working with the outliers with big data, I think, would be one theme and then trying to, to develop some custom solutions to provide value to customers uh, in, in a clever way as a result of that. And the iTron is one example of that. How do you really manage big data today? There are some very interesting tools and technologies coming out. Um, you know, Amazon, for example, is an organization where you know, a lot of people think about books or buying some other products on the, on the marketplace. Well, Amazon also provides uh, cloud computing technology. And a lot of people are now getting the knowledge of how to use that effectively. So it's not a matter of working harder. It's really a matter of, of working differently and trying to accumulate uh, these masses of data and convert that into knowledge. The, the piles of data don't help you. It's the knowledge that emerges. And, and there are a lot of tools that are emerging right now. And so there's some, some nice trends that uh, I think people are starting to pick up on and follow to, to their great advantage. What are some of the challenges confronting European companies? I, th I think the regulations in each country are, are somewhat different, and, and obviously this is a, we're, we're in it all together, right? Governments um, have educational systems, the health systems, uh, rules and regulations, import and export, and so forth. Uh, private firms, obviously, creating jobs, trying to produce, trying to compete in the global marketplace. Uh, labor unions uh, and, and the workforce can't do it without, um, without people uh, getting that work done. So there's got to be a, a nice uh, mixture and dialogue there. And I think there's, there's uh, I think it's interesting to see in the different countries, whether it's Spain or, or France or Germany or, you know, chatting with some of our colleagues from, from the UK, um, how companies are being creative and trying to resolve problems in, in each of these places. I think there is a role for improved dialogue um, and it's got to go both ways. Um, uh, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes forward uh, yeah. with some of the recent initiatives that have been announced. You mentioned that Steep Plastics has changed its strategic focus from technology to customer services. What really was so impressive about this? Steep Plastics is a very interesting story. Um, they uh, started as a plastic injection molding specialist, uh, you know, doing contract manufacturing, uh, supplying plastic parts. And through time, they've evolved in several interesting ways. One is they started focusing more in plastics in healthcare uh, sector. And so they've got a number of products with Novartis, Becton Dickinson, uh, and a number of other uh, pharmaceutical firms in the space of, of plastics for medicine dosing, uh, for transportation of blood. Uh, very interesting 
focus products. And as that evolved, they're also managing the market analysis in some cases, doing market analysis, grabbing that data and trying to create intelligence out of that, um, and using design thinking. So it's very interesting, industrial design type of techniques, um, which is, in a sense, it's counterintuitive to the big data. It's more of a small data. It's a, a, an anthropological look at how people use products or analyze the needs, the why do I need that product, and to try to adapt the product to more address the need. And they're, they're doing it, which I find very interesting. So it's a big shift from a very technology and plastics injection type of focus to an end customer solution focus. Not only for the B2B products, like I was just mentioning, the, the, the bouche bébé, uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, the blood transportation products, and some others. They're also doing it in direct to consumer, so pill boxes, but not just any old pill box. It, you know, for people who are managing um, medical conditions, uh, needing to take several uh, therapies at once over a long duration, helping people to manage that. It's also to help them become fashionable. They're almost like a Zara, if you will, of, uh, of pill boxes. Now, they're not quite as big as Zara quite yet. It's a very small company. As a matter of fact, one of the smallest companies to have applied to the award. But they're doing some very interesting things at making these pill boxes almost as a fashion accessory. So that it's a part of the, um, the end user's life. So that you can feel confident if you put your pill box on the table at a restaurant. You don't have to feel embarrassed or whatever that, that, that you're on these medications. It's just a normal, attractive device. And it's treating people like people, which is, I think, a wonderful thing. The winner of the European Industrial Excellence Award, the BMW Leipzig plant, uses four windmills to uh, produce their electric iModel car. Is this sort of the wave of the future in sustainability to get costs down? It's, it's a very interesting situation. Um, it's environmental, environmentally sustainable in that sense of uh, trying to draw upon for uh, the wind for its own energy need, plus providing uh, electric cars. So that's also a very interesting dimension. As you might expect, you know, it's, it's from a winner of the competition. These are very outstanding management, huge organizations, 6,000 people, uh, and still somehow being able to effectively translate the strategic vision to the front lines uh, very, very effectively, bringing in new products through time, uh, while decreasing costs, while uh, improving productivity. So it's, uh, it's amazing. Steve Chick, thank you very much for joining NC at Knowledge. Thanks.